Hey everyone, Jeff from the Overwatch team here. The time is upon us. We finally get to talk about Jeff from the Overwatch team. But before I get to that, let's talk about Hero 32 Echo. We hope you guys are having fun uh, with that extremely cool looking robot on the PTR. Um, she is a machine running Windows 10 created by Dr. Mina Liao. And she helped create the race of robots known as Omnics. This was one of the early things that she did, and she was extremely successful at it. Now, when the Omnic crisis happened, which as many of you know, was this terrible world war that happened where robots sort of took over the world, she had sort of a crisis of faith, wondering, what did I do? Did I contribute to this? You know, how can I help make this better? And she was shocked when Overwatch approached her and Jack Morrison basically said to her, you know, I have to queue for over 10 minutes to get into a match these days. Um, so please, you know, build us a healing support robot so I can, you know, live my life. So she became the leading expert on robotics for Overwatch. And she was trying to create a better version of what a robot could be for humanity and for society. And she came up with a robot that can kill humans uh, in many different ways. Now, when Jack Morrison saw the Echo robot, he was really frustrated. Um, he was like, Mina Liao, you dumb bitch. Can't you go two minutes without creating a killer robot? So you can see, uh, his hatred of Mina Liao um, was at an all-time high. And he was ready to introduce her to each knuckle of his left fist. But unfortunately, Min Mina Liao was killed by the South Korean team in the Overwatch World Cup, where they went up through the window with a Zarya and did a Graviton surge. Um, but the Echo pro Project persisted. Um, as you all saw in the animated short reunion, Jesse McCree's quest for the perfect robotic waifu led him to free Echo and then eventually releasing her and getting her back online so she could get some loot boxes or something like that. Um, so that's her backstory. We think it's really cool. You're going to learn a lot more about her over time. And to give you guys a little bit of history, Echo's backstory was actually... One of the last things that Michael Chu wrote um, before he was uh, banished from Blizzard for placing in season 21 with a higher skill rating than a very powerful member of the Overwatch team. And I'll let you speculate about who that might be. Um, but anyway, as many of you have probably realized by now, she is a damage character. I've heard lots of speculation on the internet that, you know, maybe she's going to be a support character. And after reading a lot of your guys' comments on our forums, um, I know that what's on a lot of players' minds is a concern over how few times are really long for those players who are playing damage. Well, what you guys need to know and understand is that I'm, I'm a DPS player first and foremost. I love damage characters, and I live the DPS lifestyle every single day. You know, I double jump out of bed um, every morning like Genji. I teleport out of my house just like Reaper and just like Torbjorn. After a really tough day at work, I like to come home um, and uh, shoot out pools of that magma hot liquid magma, some might say. Um, so you can imagine when the other developers on the Overwatch team ask me, you know, what type of hero are we adding to Overwatch next? It gets very tricky. Um, you know, we got to weigh on one hand the community's desire to have a more balanced Overwatch roster. And on the other hand, um, my personal desire to fly around as a sexy shape-shifting robot shooting sticky bombs at other players. So that was sort of our intentions behind her. It was very deliberate, but don't worry, multiple new heroes are imminently coming to Overwatch when we release Overwatch 2 sometime um, in the next 30 years. So you have those to look forward to. Um, now, this kind of segues a little bit into another topic. <laughs> 
I wanted to give you guys a larger idea of what's happening with Overwatch 2 right now. Um, we've been working very hard on creating a fun, engaging experience. And I think we've come up with some really exciting PVE story moments that we think you're really going to enjoy. For example, there's a really exciting mission where um, Mercy realizes that she's never going to get her old ultimate ability back. And then you have to try to stop her from, you know, turning the gun on herself. Um, and all of this plays out in awesome cinematic ways. But beyond that, as I mentioned at BlizzCon, when it comes to Overwatch 2, um, we want to redefine what a sequel means. And that is why I'm very pleased to announce that apart from the PVE missions that I mentioned before, um, the second half of Overwatch 2 um, will be released as an amazingly smooth dance performed by myself on different stages all over the world. And this might take a different shape or form, and that's still to be determined, but I just want to share with you, you know, some of our thoughts and some of what we're working on um, with Overwatch 2. But for now, enjoy Echo, and we look forward to hearing your feedback. Thanks again. All the time somebody's saying, you know, something negative on the forums. And that is why the next experimental card will actually be a link to a live chat um, with me. And we can, you know, finally sort out this whole Overwatch thing in a live setting directly through the game client. However, I will only listen to your feedback if you deliver it as 14 lines of iambic pentameter. I'm confident that you all will come up with creative, beautiful sonnets explaining how I'm, I'm a bad person doing bad things to Overwatch.